Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and today we're going to be exploring this Euro cylinder. And you might be thinking, well, isn't that just a standard British standard lock? Nothing too special? Uh, no, no, you'd be wrong there. Just have a look at this. It's a six pin Euro, but it's got two rows of trap pins for um, whether you know you're picking it clockwise or anti clockwise, but four trap pins in a lock uh, is unusual. Most only have two or three per side. Um, so yeah, very, very impressive. And look how small they are. Um, these are spool pins as well. I definitely feel that inside the lock. And uh, just causes untold amounts of pain to try and set these because they go into the most incredible deep fault set. Um, so who makes this lock? I mean, look at that. It looks like a restricted keyway. Look at the key there. You can see how um, different that profile is. Um, and it's a company called Securist Style. Now, I looked them up. They're not a lock company. They make window and door hardware, gearboxes and such like. Um, so I've got no idea why they're making such a high security cylinder, albeit one with no anti-snap protection, although I guess you could put it in the right escutcheon and you'll be um, all right. So uh, yeah, I yeah I, I don't know I don't know anything about this lock per se on the website. They don't have any information about Euro cylinders at all. Um, clearly, either they make it themselves or they get somebody else to make the lock and rebrand it. I I don't know. It's really strange. The worst thing is I can't gut this safely. I can't gut this without risking the whole thing um, seizing up. Why? Well, these little trap pins are tiny and they would easily fit into the groove that the circlip here, which is actually a lot wider than it appears because it goes slightly into the lock body um, itself. So that if I was to remove the core, even by um, using a front follower, I'm almost guaranteed that these would trap themselves in the tailpiece. And I can't find a way to get a shim in um, through here either, especially because this section in the middle uh, is, is connected at both sides with a spring. The only way I can think they even assembled this lock is by uh, pinning it from the top and then pushing these plugs in. I don't think it's ever meant to be serviced or repinned. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really challenging pick. And um, as far as I'm concerned, virtually impossible to, to gut, or at least gut in a safe way, which means you're not gonna seize the lock up. Um, yeah, anyway. The best we can do is pick this and just look at that bitting. Isn't that lovely bitting? Look at this. Look how deep pin three is compared to four, five, and six. I mean, that's that's really going to be a hard pick, and it is. So the best thing we can do is we're going to pick it, get it into one of the trap pins, and we're going to pick it back out of the trap pins to its standard position again. Um, I'd love to know what's inside. My best guess is that it is some multi-spool pins, a bit like Asa pins. Um, and I believe that they're tapered as well because it definitely, definitely hangs up um, even when you pick the pins very easily. Right, let's throw this incredibly tough lock in a vise and let's see how we get on. So here we are in the vise and this is the bitting that we're going to be contending with here. I mean, just, oh, what a what a pain that is, I tell you. I, I know it's going to be very hard to get across how difficult this lock is to pick, but it is so, so difficult. Um, so much so I've had to make a custom tension tool to allow me to uh, tension the lock um, from the top of the keyway in a way which gives me really good tension control both ways because I need to manually counter rotate it on occasion. And I'm going to need a pick like the Lunatic to help me reach around that um, incredible bitting there. Um, it's one of my go-to picks anyway so it's sort of what I'd use. Medium to light tension on, on this and um, yeah, pin one. Nice click, pin two, little click, back to pin one again. There we go, right. Pin, ah, five. Now, I don't think that is fully set. I just think what we've done is we nudged it into a false set. Um, and as we came back off that pin, it went deeper. So I think maybe we were hung up on some kind of beveling. Uh, ah, this is pin manual cancer rotation there we go now it hasn't gone back to its full set 
um, but that's okay probably just means another pin has fallen down so just go through and check so that's pin two and now pin one again so we definitely drop those hit pin five again which there we go, and four now is picked hit pin five now pin six this is going to be really tough because it doesn't like to be picked pin six for reasons only known to itself um, and when you do pick it there's no guarantee that um, it will go back into its full set makes you think that there's a a bevel pin somewhere and just tapping on it to and loosely pulsing tension if not go back to five there you go uh, four three two one okay so we're definitely saying at the back here feels like it is pin six Maybe on four nope in fact we drop pin two and one Pin six, pin five. And what I'm doing is I'm just extra. Oh, we, we got it, we got it. We, we, we picked it, right? We have picked it, and it looks like it's going into the deepest false set. It looks like I can turn it around even further. Can't. This is how much movement you have with these trap pins. So I'm going to put this. Pick in vertically so you can see it goes from here, that this position, there, all the way around to here. Look at that, look at that difference. That is because the trap pins are still in the keyway here. They've gone so, so deep. They must be very long, tiny little spools. Um, and there are four of them, which makes picking out of this so hard. Now. If I picked it clockwise continuing, I then need to pick it again when um, the trap pins hit the other side at the bottom of the keyway, and then I, I need to pick the uh, key pins out of the bottom of the keyway and then turn it around again, and it, it would just be horrific. So to save myself and you a lot of time, I'm going to pick out of the trap pins, but the other way around to relock it back up. As it happens, I can't, as you can see, if this was vertical, it's very much off vertical at the moment um, so let's pick our way out of these trap pins which again is not easy in any way at all so um okay so that is probably pin four three two ah look at that see see how it moved but we're still not cl closed yet. It's because these are tiny little spool pins. Um, pure evil, if you ask me. Let's have a go. Where are we? So, uh, that's four, three, two. To, uh, which pin would that be? It should be five, wouldn't it? Five, four, three, and what I'm doing here is ah, is trying my best to find the uh, pin which is binding, manually counter it anti clockwise until I hear, hear that snap of the pin go back in. And there we go, I think I've got it. Whew, sort of sweating here a bit. It's one of those rare locks where I don't know many people have ever picked one of these. So it's very, really hard to get across how difficult a pick this is. Um, but there you go, you can see that it's now picked, but hopefully listen, there you go. Now it's come out of the trap pins and into the 
um, normal six pins in the centre of the Bible. Whew, that is tough. If you ever, ever see one of these, which is a Securis style, there you go, Securis style um, lock, with that keyway on eBay or something like that, grab it. It will give you hours of pleasure or pain, depending on which way you look at it. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, thank you to GJ Locks for sending me this lock. I can see why you sent it to me now. And uh, if anybody knows anything about who actually makes this lock, I doubt it's Securis style, they, they might do, then please let me know in the comments because this is a hell of a thing. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.